and we're back, ladies and gentlemen, with the show that is bringing out the summer with a musical high note with plenty of traffic, only known as Music Village. And yeah, before we go any further, folks, for you YouTube fans out there, you can expect Music Village hopefully by 10 p.m. tonight. And according to that guy who's on Fox, and with the guy who does the opener for the Indie Radio Arcade here today, go ahead and hit him with the line, man. It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your music village is? Perfect. Just perfect. <laughs> but besides us trying to take a famous line that's been on the air for well over 30 years, I'm looking at my watch right now. Oh, it's just about that time. It's the witching hour, which means it's time for us to be brought up to speed on news stories that happened from this week from, you guessed it, all around the world. And in our first news story and the I can't believe it's not butter sort of news for this week, folks, Apparently, that Facebook meeting that was supposed to go down at Area 51, turns out that it was not in the millions, but in the hundreds. Just about, well, over a hundred people showed up at the Area 51 site to try to storm Area 51, only for two people to get arrested, one for indecent exposure for urinating on the fence, and another gentleman for trying to sneak underneath the fence. But besides that, the rest of the people who tried to go to Area 51 was real, uh, you know, calm and stayed outside the gate and just had friendly signs up with predator or prey and just chanting stuff about aliens while wearing tinfoil hats. So, yeah, I didn't think they were going to do it. I really didn't. But with the footage that they shown, and not to mention a whole bunch of... A whole bunch of people holding up signs and actually Naruto running toward the gate itself is absolutely ridiculous. And a personal thanks to Ryan Nemes on Twitter for actually showing the one person who was Naruto running toward the fence to try to get into Area 51. And yeah, if you guys out there, if you guys out there wanna see this outrageousness for yourselves, you can head on over to the Twitter page of one man only known as Ryan Nemez to check it out for yourselves. And head on over to consequencesofsound.net to check out the other pictures of how the storming of the Area 51 gate went. Ah, oh, man, you know, it's, it's days like these that gives me a headache of how silly some people really are. Moving along to the next story, because in other news, in light of what happened to the lead singer of the cars, Blink-182's Mark Hopkins would share a moody version of the Cars song known as Just What I Needed. And originally this song was supposed to be recorded for a TV show that never made it onto the airwaves, so he decided as of this week to release this song on SoundCloud, and my god, it reminds me of the cover of when him did the cover of Don't Fear the Reaper for Blue Oyster Cult, and it's a real cool song by the way it sounds. And I didn't know the lead singer of Blink-182 could do songs like this. Because for any of you who listened to Blink-182 in the 90s and the early 2000s, they usually do music that is upbeat and would most likely be featured during movies like American Pie. So to see him do a song like this, pretty cool, man. Pretty cool. And for any of you out there who wants to check out this song for yourselves, you can head on over to the SoundCloud page of one man only known as Mark Hoppus to check it out for yourself. And in other news connecting to the first news story that we said for this week, apparently 
the Foo Fighters would mark the Area 51 raid with a live album with seven different songs that was from performances from Roswell, New Mexico. And on this seven track album, folks, it not only includes In Your Honor, the last song, Free Me, Stacked Actors, Monkey Wrench, All My Life, and This Is a Call that was all performed at the Walker Air Force Base in Roswell, New Mexico in 2005. Very impressive. And the fact that the Foo Fighters can perform in Roswell shows you how cool Dave Grohl is. And as a matter of fact, I got a feeling in the near future we're going to probably have a segment on this show is how cool is Dave Grohl to actually mention all the cool things he's done over his life. Yeah. It's probably going to show up by next December. I'm not too entirely sure on the date, but if any of you out there who wants to listen to these live tracks in accordance to the Area 51 raid that took place as of 3 a.m. this past morning, you can go ahead and check it out on the website known as consequencesofsound.net to check it out for yourselves or head on over to the Spotify page of one band known as the Foo Fighters. And a little disappointed that Learn to Fly was not on this list of songs for Roswell, New Mexico. Really wish they would have performed it there. And with that last regular news story out of the way, folks, you guys at home know what time it is. It's time for us to go into a special summer ending edition of... Video In our first video game news story, or should I say up, up, down, down, challenging news. And why do I say challenging news, folks? Well, several different superstars who formerly held the up, up, down, down championship would all be wondering the same question I am. Where is Seth Rollins to defend that said championship? And he would get challenged by none other than the money maker, Mr. 24-7, Swagger to Christie. And I got a feeling the next one that's going to come knocking at the door would be the power game former champion himself, Samoa Joe, a.k.a. Joey Headrogger, to get that belt back from Seth. And yeah... With the fact that Swagatha Christie, the recent person to actually challenge him to bring up the Twitter war he had with Will Ospreay and a little bit of a poem that he decided to have for him, I can't wait to see who's going to be the first one to try to go one-on-one -on -one with the champ. And if you guys out there want to check out any of these messages that was delivered by multiple superstars and former champions of the Up Up Down Down Championship, you can head on over to the YouTube page of one man only known as Up Up Down Down to check it out for yourselves. And by the way, he also did a superstar save point with Shinsuke Nakamura in Fire Pro Wrestling if that doesn't whet your appetite enough. And in other video game news, for you fans out there of Apex Legends, when Season 3 kicks off on the 1st of October, you have a new character waiting for you at the gates that goes by the name of Crypto. And immediately when I heard this name, I thought of that Cartoon Network show, Crypto the Superdog, and the theme song got stuck in my head for about an hour until I saw the trailer for this said character, which reminds me automatically of the Animatrix right off the bat. And the exciting thing about this new character, folks, it brings a new weapon to the game known as the Charge Rifle. And I, for one, who played with many a charge rifles in my day, can automatically tell you that this is probably going to be one of the most dangerous weapons to hit the scene in Apex Legends. That's if they got a railgun or not, which I have no idea if they do. 
And if you guys want to check out the new trailer for the new character that goes by the name of Crypto, you can head on over to the Game Informer page, only known as GameInformer.com, to check it out for yourselves. Or head on over to the YouTube page of Apex Legends to check it out over there as well. Because we like giving you guys options. Really do. And in other video game news, or in Mr. X news for Resident Evil 2, if you thought that Mr. X couldn't get any scarier than Thomas the Tank Engine, well, you're wrong. Because a modder that goes by the name of... Marcos RC would decide to patch in none other than Pennywise from the remake of the IT series into the world of Resident Evil 2. And if you're wondering at home, yes he has the creepy smile, the creepy eyes, and the creepy clown outfit to piece it all together to make Mr. X seem more terrifying than he already is. And I, for one, who never really truly got a chance to see the new IT series, but only saw bits and pieces online, if he can do half the things he can do in the movie in this game, I am not gonna touch Resident Evil for as long as I live, cause that would be absolutely terrifying. And if you guys want to go ahead and check out what this Mr. X or Mr. It can do in the world of Resident Evil 2, you can head on over to the website or the YouTube page of one man only known as Marcos RC. Which for some strange reason I'm thinking of Tycho RC and no, no. And oh, Maestro told me that they also added the sound effects from the IT movie in the film or the game for IT when he's modded in. That makes it even worse. <laughs> and with that news story out of the way for this summer and for this week, folks, you have all officially been brought up to speed. And I guess with that said, we might as well head back to music, and when we return, we'll be back with the final segment for Music Village for this week, right after this. So don't go anywhere just yet, folks, and stay tuned. 